Did you know that people can give you uh, a gift that you can use for down payment or closing costs when you're buying a home? Uh, you absolutely can. And this is the last in a series of gift funds and gift of equity guidelines for every different agency that you can buy a home. Uh, this video is about USDA. So if you're eligible for a USDA rural development loan, um, then this video is for you. If you're thinking about a conventional loan, there's a video for Fannie Mae gift fund guidelines, Freddie Mac gift, loan, gift fund guidelines, say that three times fast, uh, FHA and VA, and then this one is USDA. So let's get right into it. So what are gift funds? Gift funds are non-borrower funds that are given to you, the buyer, that can be used for the down payment or closing cost when you're buying a home. Now, who can give you a gift? Uh, anyone that does not have an interest in the sale of the property. Uh, with USDA, that's a builder, a developer, real estate agent, the loan officer, the seller of the home. They cannot give you a gift of equity. Now, you can get money from a builder or from a real estate agent or from a loan officer, but those are called concessions or credits. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about gift funds um, that can be used for down payment or closing costs. So anyone that doesn't have an interest in the property can give you a gift if you're using a USDA loan. Now, this is much different from most of the other loan programs. Uh, Fannie Mae is the most strict um, with only family, family members can give you a gift. Uh, Freddie Mac is a little bit more loose. Uh, FHA is uh, has a, a much more broad definition of who can give you uh, gift funds. Same with VA, same with uh, USDA. So with USDA, they don't necessarily have to be a family member, uh, but they just cannot benefit from the sale of the property. So USDA gift funds guidelines, gift funds cannot be used as reserves. Uh, with FHA, under certain circumstances, if there was reserve requirements, so reserve requirements means that after you pay your down payment, after you pay your closing costs, you still have to have a certain amount of money in your bank account as reserves, so emergency fund, right? Uh, FHA, you can use a gift fund for those reserves. Uh, USDA, you cannot. Uh, gift funds are, re are considered your own funds and can be uh, returned to you at the close of escrow uh, if you're eligible. Um, cash on hand is not an acceptable source of gift funds. So you can't have money in a cookie jar or under a mattress. It needs to come from someplace that can be documented. Uh, now, if you're receiving a gift from somebody, the very first thing you'll need is a gift letter. All gift funds require a gift letter and all gift letters require the same information. That information is the donor's name, who's giving you the money, what their address is and what their telephone number is, uh, what their relationship is to you, the amount of the gift, um, and a statement of no repayment. So all gift, a gift by definition, means that they're not expecting you to pay that money back or else it would be a loan. So all gift letters need a statement that says, I understand this is a gift and I have no expectations that this money will be paid back. Um, that is a statement of no repayment. Uh, documentation. So if somebody gives you a gift, you need a, a paper trail. You need to document where that money came from. Because again, you the underwriter wants to make sure that the person who's giving you the money had the money to give you, that they didn't borrow the money. So they're going to require a paper trail. Uh, they have to show that there's an availability of funds. Now, I'm going to kind of go through a couple of different scenarios, and then I'm going to show you how to avoid all of this. Now, when we're getting a gift from somebody, they're already helping us out. We don't want to burden them any further than we have to. We don't want to make this inconvenient or difficult for them because they're already helping us tremendously by helping us with our down payment or closing costs. So, 
it's important that if you get a gift, you talk to your loan officer right up front and explain to them that you're getting a gift, who you're getting the gift from, um, so that they can kind of guide you through this. What you don't want to do is just assume and do all of this stuff on your own. I've seen more trouble. So here's an example. If you're the person writes you a check, if somebody writes you a check and then puts it into your bank account, you're going to have to show their bank statement showing that they had the money. You're going to have to show a copy of the check. You're going to have to show the deposit slip of that check into your bank account. Um, that's one way. Or if they withdraw money from their account and then deposit it into your account, we have to show their bank statements, show the withdrawal slip, show the exact amount of money going deposited into your bank account. Uh, if they give the money directly to the closing agent, so whether you're using an escrow company or a settlement attorney, a real estate attorney to do your settlement services, if they send the money directly to them, uh, you may have to show a copy of where the money came from. They may have to show their statements depending on how they sent the money, uh, but they are going to, uh, you could use the receipt from the settlement agency showing that they receive the money and that's going to be uh that's going to be uh sufficient the best way uh to do this is electronic transfer the best way to avoid uh the, the to avoid having to do a bunch of paperwork and a bunch of documentation is have them wire the money directly from their account to the settlement agency now they couldn't have had uh, they couldn't do the wire if they didn't have the money in their account. So you reduce some of the paperwork there. So having the money transferred from their bank account to the settlement escrow or the real estate attorney is by far the, the best. Now, if you still are going to have challenges getting gift funds or if the person giving you the money is going to borrow the money or something like that, the way to the workaround around all gift fund guidelines is to get the gift early. When I say get the gift early, that means that they want to deposit the money into your account, the account that you're going to use for the transaction. And if they deposit that money for in your account and then it shows up, the balance shows up on two bank statements. So that's 60 days worth of bank statements. If the balance shows up on two bank statements, then that is considered your money. It's considered sourced and seasoned, and it's an acceptable source of funds for all your down payment and closing costs. You don't want to give them the, de the, the bank statement showing the deposit because then you're going to have to source the deposit. You're going to have to show where the deposit came from, and you're going to have to prove that the person that gave you the money had the money to give you, and then that's not a workaround. That's complicated. So if you know you're going to have trouble, so say grandma has... Um, a suitcase with $20,000 in it, and she hands you a few stacks of crisp $100 bills. Um, that is not acceptable source of gift funds. But if you put those $100 bills in your bank account, you wait two months, you get two bank statements showing the balance with that money in it. It is no longer considered uh, a gift funds. It is considered your money that is sourced and seasoned, and you can use it 100%. Um, so what's a gift of equity? A gift of equity is equity in a property that's gifted to you, the buyer, that can be used for the down payment on the purchase of the home. And this is usually when you're buying a home from a relative. Now, the gift of equity guidelines uh, is the gift. Um, the gift of equity is used to reduce the purchase price. So here's an example. Let's say you have a property that's worth $400,000. Um, USDA is 100% financing. So you don't have a down payment requirement um, with a USDA loan. So the, if you have a gift, so if the house is worth 300000 or worth $400,000 and your parents want to give you a uh, $100,000 gift of equity, then you're going to, the purchase price is going to be $300,000. So you're going to reduce the purchase price by the gift of equity. Uh, you need to make sure the appraiser needs to know that there's a gift. So your loan officer, again, 
anytime you're going to use a gift, you need to make sure the loan officer knows early and that they know all of the details. They know where the money is coming from, how the money is going to be transferred to you. Make sure you're doing it the right way. On a gift of equity, you just need to make sure that your loan officer tells the appraiser, hey, this is they're, the, the, they're buying this home from the relative. The relative is giving them this money, this equity. They're donating the equity towards the sales price. Um, the borrower cannot receive any cash back um, at close for a gift of equity. So again, if you're just getting gift funds and you get more gift funds than you need for down payment or closing costs, you can get that money back. If it's a gift of equity, um, if it's a gift of equity and there's money left over, that money cannot come back to you. That's the difference between gift funds and a gift of equity. So the gift of equity letter uh, is going to be the same as any other gift. All gifts require a gift letter. All gift letters require the same information. Who's giving you the, who's giving you the money, their address, their telephone number, uh, who, what their relationship is to you, the amount of the gift and a statement that says this is a gift. There are no expectations of repayment. So if you are trying to qualify for a purchase of a U, uh, purchase of a home using a USDA loan and you're interested in using uh, gift funds or a gift of equity, and if I did not answer your question to, um, to your satisfaction in this video, we are here to help. Um, I am the founder of findmywayhome.com. Findmywayhome.com, I started after the last mortgage crash in 2008, and it's designed to educate and empower consumers to make more informed decisions about qualifying for a mortgage. Uh, we are also your first choice for a second opinion. Almost everybody that comes to my website, and that's about 25,000 unique people every single month, have been told no by another loan officer. And that's because that loan officer probably works in a call center. Um, they probably work in a big box lender, and they don't know their guidelines. One of the reasons why I'm showing you all these guidelines and I'm breaking it down uh, for USDA. Uh, I also have a video for Fannie Mae uh, conventional, Freddie Mac conventional, FHA government, VA government, USDA government is so that you can understand that there are options for you. So if you get a lazy or uninformed loan officer, you know the difference. Again, findmywayhome.com. On findmywayhome.com, there is a directory of experienced mortgage professionals that I know, like, and trust that are there to answer your questions about qualifying for a mortgage. Uh, if you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel, thank you for being a subscriber. Uh, you will be notified on Wednesdays. We are doing a live question and answer. You can just pop on anonymously, ask questions, and we will answer those questions for you. Uh, you can also ask questions down below in the comment section on, um, on YouTube, or if you're on Find My Way Home, you can ask questions anywhere there, and we are here to answer your questions. There's links and there's more details um, down below this video. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. And if you're feeling lost or you're feeling like you're having a difficult time on your journey for home ownership, I'm glad you found us because we are here to help you find your way home. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.